Sir, do I really have to do that? Really? Uh, rolling, no? One second, sorry. Why don't you allow people to step out in the night? As you had said earlier, you had to educate a lot of people. This education might not have gone to a lot of people. And Uh, welcome everyone, uh, I am Siddharth, I am the uh, host for the Guwahati Forum today and I am very glad to be uh, hosting this particular panel after a very long time, uh, especially because now that we are in lockdown 3.0, Guwahati is clearly missing one thing, uh, that is eating out. I think Guwahati is one of those cities that was fast emerging in the space of dining, experiencing new cuisines and of course we have always had a very varied spread. Uh, so I am joined by few friends of ours from the food and beverage industry who we have worked very closely with the over the past seven years for our prestigious Guwahati Food Awards also. I'd quickly like to take a minute uh, and ask them to introduce themselves. Uh, well, I'm Dhruv Arya, uh, owner of Mark and Book, Sweets and Snacks and Restaurant. Hey, hi, uh, I'm Vinay, I'm a co-owner of Piazza. Hi Siddharth, hi everyone, I'm Chiranjeev. I, uh, we own uh, Yoko Sizzlers, the outlet in Guwahati. Great, so we have liquor-based business. A pure vegetarian restaurant, a fine dining restaurant, and of course a specialty restaurant. Now, what uh, this this I would call it a very healthy mix. Thru, we'll start with you. What was lockdown uh, for you? See, obviously uh, we had seen it coming right from uh, mid of March, and obviously we had cut down on the production of sweets and everything. Initial days uh, we were you know a little bit uh, confused about what to do, but then we took it forward with a social cause. We started using our kitchen uh, towards a noble cause of feeding around uh, 2,000 people every day. So over the last 40 days, we have fed approximately 70,000 meals using our kitchen and with the help of a certain organization called Helping Heart. So we were pretty much occupied with that but then uh, as and when we saw the opportunity of opening up we had to do away with that and uh, right uh, from as soon as the lockdown 3.2 started we started operating our kitchen for deliveries and takeaways as well. Which of course is much uh, at a much later stage I mean of yeah. course one and a half months later into lockdown. Which brings me to a question for Vinay. Operating a restaurant is a very difficult work. But what happened when the initial lockdown was announced? What was it, what were the initial reactions? Well, the first initial reaction was yeah was already happening in Europe. Uh, other countries were already locked down. We were uh, assuming it will happen. That was already prepared for, so to say. But the main concern was the employees because a varied mix of people were working with us, close to 28-30 people from different parts of Northeast. Staff from Mizoram. We have staff from Meghalaya. We have staff from Upper Assam. So the first point was how to make them secure and get them the basic needs which is required to sustain. Uh, somehow, yeah, all of them got stuck. So all 20-25 of our staff were stuck here in Guwahati. They could not go home. So the first one, one and a half month was uh, making them uh, feel comfortable, giving them what was required. And yeah, as far as the restaurant operations was, we were already prepared for it that the lockdown will come. So and, and so Chiranji, were you also prepared? Did you see this coming considering the impact it had on Europe. So uh, I, I think the first step that we started taking was to ensure that uh, if we are able to operate with certain uh, measures in place, ensure that the staff are not scared. Uh, I think this pandemic was more of a case where a lot of information was shared and a lot of uh, unnecessary education happened in the beginning. So I think for us to ensure that the staff understands what are the symptoms, what are not the symptoms, how does it spread, how does it not spread. Although these knowledges were like you know evolving, it was important. Uh, we took an early call to uh, shut operations and uh, help our staff reach various parts of the country, in fact, not just parts in Assam, but uh, some in West Bengal, some in uh, Mumbai, some in uh, Uttar Pradesh. We ensured that they reach their homes. Second thing was to understand, uh, you know, the uh, various aspects of, let's say, the staff welfare. We did pay the salaries of these staff and uh, we, we continue to do so. A lot of them are expecting salaries on the 10th, which is our practice. Circle back to this point of uh, dealing with staff support. Did any of you lay off people or were you were you considering laying off people? Kya wahas, did the situation ever go there? I would be very honest, like we might be laying off 30% of our staff when we open. It's it's as straightforward as that. If, 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 uh, if it continues for a long time, we also might have to look at it. But right now, no, we are keeping it. 
uh our first response is to see where we can let's say rehabilitate in the other units not in the restaurant we have other businesses as well like the guest house accommodation base uh a lot of the people who work in our restaurant is from are from the bodo tribal belt and all so there is a possibility that we might at look at uh, you know bringing them to let's say the guest house but that totally depends on the tourism industry hmm. and and just again i'll just ask another question in the same line what do you think is the threshold for laying off i mean bus i'm done now ab ab main nahi sakta i cannot do this when did you do you, when do you feel that maybe since you have not laid off that's why i would ask you see i suppose if uh, what was normal what was considered normal before the pandemic if it doesn't come back for another 4 months i think that is going to be the end of it you know that is when we'll have to start looking at other ways see the fnb industry is aligned big time to as i mentioned the tourism industry so i don't see tourism opening up in the next 6 months at least their best there can be road drives their own people will be scared to go to airport so there won't be friends coming in from say a dibrugarh or a tinsukia there won't be friends coming in from calcutta so if you don't have people coming from outside how many people will go out and dine so end of the day even tourism and fnb they are interrelated till as long as tourism is in a dull state fnb would not go up valid perspective of course so in the 3.0 edition of the lockdown we have seen some relaxations that have come in in terms of allowing home deliveries your take on that see uh, for a restaurant like us we as i told you we have a, 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 almost 30% of our sales regular sales coming in in the form of takeaways and home deliveries so we won't mind starting it right now so in fact we have already started them uh, but then our complete dependency on home day de- home uh, deliveries and takeaways it won't work for long as long as people don't have that confidence back on the delivery systems and on the restaurants i don't think too many people will prefer eating out you know and, and when do you think cj what what's your opinion on this when do you think people will start to feel normal or a little safe or kab tak i will be okay to go out and eat at makhan bhog or pia or uh, yoko see there is a wish i wish it happens very soon uh, but more than customer or consumer sentiments i think it largely depends on how the government takes a stand on the lockdown and puts restriction the moment the government takes a stand that you know what it's okay you can go out there are no restrictions entering a mall people will eventually start going out uh, we've seen that case happening in places like you know uae dubai and all where uh, malls are shut they don't let malls you know people go in hence people are you know getting into online deliveries and groceries and takeaways and all right so if the government doesn't allow movement automatically the customers won't feel confident to go out venture and eat out customer sentiments they follow later on you know and i think a lot of it is based on how a restaurant is able to project themselves or at least you know maintain safety standards my take to answer your question is uh, i i am optimistic at around october end october month end. on on customer perspective what are the things that you've done i mean what are the practices that you take care of in terms of sanitation or hygiene so since considering that you are delivering uh, at this point so so right just before we opened up we did a complete sanitization of our premises and another one happened today morning so we are trying to do it every week once a week and apart from that the regular sanitization process it is ongoing you know regular cleaning with uh, chemicals and everything that our staff does it but professionally we are getting it done once a week then temperature checks of all in fact we are, what we have done is we have put up a temperature chart of the staff right in front of the customers eyes you know so that the customer can himself have a look at uh, if everything is right or not or if we are able to maintain the record or not so these are few things we we have done and what we have uh, done is also try to project it to the customers i have taken pictures of it and sent it to the regular customers told them that okay come come in have a look if you feel confident buy something so and 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 do you think this micro management is going to help even if it's now or in the long term because this is likely to continue until the time we find a vaccine maybe i mean we no matter what relaxations we bring in jab tak vaccine nahi hai till till that time we're going to be looking at always fearing proximity so do you think this micro management uh, this level of micro management noting down temperature and giving hourly updates or weekly sanitization this is really going to continue or will help businesses revive as chiranjeev thinks october most times what happens is uh, things which have happened in outside countries they are eventually copied in india 
in a case like this this is like a continuous thing which is simultaneously happening so whatever precautions he is mentioning whatever sanitization processes they are just uh, world health organization has released this uh, list guidelines all countries are following it so the reaction of the consumer will be known to us after 2 months nobody can tell how the consumer will react government i would say their logic of creating a panic like situation wherein they created an atmosphere where everybody is in a panicky situation which was not required for i guess but yeah now we'll have to overcome that panic situation where the customers or the consumers they start feeling safe again that is the catchy and the tricky part so let's see how it happens okay so clearly so we've closed on certain points which is uh, you know hopes to revive customer sentiment is still uh, a little far away <coughs> micro management could help in the immediate plan but not a long term solution maybe clearly for some businesses uh, say specialty based restaurants uh, like a sizzler joint they might not be able to make most of a delivery based service or a uh, you know no contact delivery for that matter because they would be affecting the experience that their joint has to offer am i correct just just one last final perspective what kind of expectation do you have from the public when they come back out on the streets regardless of a you know vaccine coming or what do they what do you want do you want them to be precautious or do you want them to just move out i oh please dawa ke mithai khao daru piyo aur sizzler khao what's the see uh, first thing uh, what we can do is you know we provide a kind of a setup or a guideline at the restaurant but the guidelines is for the customer the customers have to follow them now uh, we are we have strictly said no to anyone coming in without a mask somebody is not maintaining the social distancing features we are strictly saying no to them so it is ultimately upon the customers how well we can take it forward definitely the day it opens up well i think uh, we still have to maintain all of it and it's not just that ticket the din se nahi khaya aaj toot padho it cannot be that way so you talk about perspective so i'll give you a different perspective okay so say for example now north east as such uh, we contribute to the the national gdp our contribution is less than 3% there are other countries wherein states have uh, been separately treated as say now what we are doing is red zone orange zone and green zone that the government has done across the blank across the country but stay rather there are countries wherein there are states we have been uh, who did not go under a lockdown at all my personal opinion was north east did not require a lockdown that could have been one case wherein if notice was not under a lockdown or say food delivery should not be uh, should not have been kept totally uh, off during the lockdown period that was an essential thing especially for makhan bhog and other outlets who served the masses those outlets should have been open even during the lockdown period that is my opinion now coming to the point that if 3% of the gdp is not making any impact in the national decision we hardly have any space in the national media so when some decision has been taken for a maharashtra or a tamil nadu or a gujarat should not have been implemented in north east maybe more scientific brains should have been put in rather than just going for a lockdown now we are looking at what hardly 100 200 odd cases in north east we are prepared for like uh, 20000 so yeah we would we, we i i might be sounding very insensitive but yeah we would have seen a 100 more cases but the economy would have been like plus by another 30 40000 crores the entire north east all seven eight states put together it's a very bold perspective for uh, winner to take on very very uh, appreciated uh, really coming especially from from the food and beverage industry uh, but <clears throat> maybe maybe we'll we'll see what people think about it uh, If you think uh, Vinay's opinion or perspective is good, leave them in the comments below. I am just asking people to think over it. I am not giving no, you no, any, no, anything no, to think no, about. Uh, that, that's a point, to, important point to deliberate on because you are working on a business model. I mean, if if your business model is shut down for one and a half months, if your thirty five percent of the Assam's GDP is industry, which was shut. Your forty percent is your agriculture, which was shut. You have shut down hundred percent of the economy to to keep people at home. What was the logic? Like I still don't find a log- valid logic. Like the social distancing, which is lockdown three point zero, could have been lockdown one point zero also. What we are doing now could have been the case maybe forty days back also. So that that's that's I I'm sure a lot of people will agree to what you're saying. A lot of people could Sim- also sim- again. I'll just add to it. A simple math is we have we have four people. so that is the total population right and we have 24 hours a day now uh, see, uh, 12 hours is curfew right so we are left with 12 hours so all of us have to go out we have to work and we have to do our things in 12 hours why don't you use 24 hours 
why don't you allow people to step out in the night maybe uh, you divide the four people and give me time to step out in the night i might do my things in the night maybe recreational or maybe sports good can be open in the night yeah i think there has to be some innovative solutions that has to come up from the government and the administration you use the 24 hours a day don't keep people confined to their home for 12 hours like that just doesn't make sense and just 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 to ask another question on the same perspective if you agree i, I, I might jump in i have uh, I, i don't oppose it totally in the beginning of the uh, pandemic yes i was also thinking maybe you know uh, let, let's go for some economic drive and all but then it's an entire economic downturn spiral first there is a shock with in terms of let's say supply or maybe demand right and then after some time people will not have enough money to even pay for what they aspire right so i mean it's going to get into a spiral demand shock supply shock again demand shock then supply shock and then propensity to spend is going to take a larger hit i don't think assam industry is going to sustain on its own if we just remain open we are so much dependent on all the other states and all this and exports and all those things if they don't buy we don't sell we don't manufacture and this keeps on going right uh, i i think the government's move to do the lockdown was to break the chain rather than breaking the chain i think we have retarded that spread to some extent can't say but wholly not making use of the time that we have you know the six hour blanket curfews yeah, yeah. are not clearly helping public anything. transports can be stopped in the night so people who are you are having your own vehicle if you four people want or two people want to sit in a car and drive down to say makanburg is open at 11 o'clock in the night again a different perspective so i i would probably go at the 11 in the night pick up some stuff and then morning day times i would not go so they, do you really think uh, you know between the four of us we are we are we are practicing a set of measures that we consider appropriate for uh, you know not being infecting others or and or being infecting or, or infecting ourselves but the point is that this audience is still on the shorter side this is on on the smaller side there's still a lot of people who as you had said earlier you had to educate a lot of people this education might not have gone to a lot of people and what if one of them becomes the uh, you know, who would take the responsibility because one person become the foreman so mind. that is what the district administration is doing they what the notification as asthma that has come two shops will be open once a week so basically to for two days opening my shop i'll go call my guy from rangia he will come for two days he will open the shop and five days he will go back again not possible right Pr- practically not possible so what i am suggesting is use the same logic where in two days a week you give me six hours every day give me a time say nine o'clock in the night till three o'clock in the morning i'll open every day makes more sense let yesterday if somebody had come to a cycle shop in, uh, in on bb borwa road only today again he was next to it the shop was closed because he didn't realize that yesterday the shop was open and next the shop will open next week now so so with this we'll conclude today's uh, guwahati forum thank you so much guys for being here really appreciate uh, you giving in your time and your support and your valuable opinion i look forward to seeing all of you dear audience uh, on the coming episodes of guwahati forum until then take care stay safe uh, practice all social distancing norms and see you again